My name is Emily. I'm the Crazy Flippin' Mom. And today we're going to talk about all the current reseller news updates that are happening while I take clearance stickers off of a lot of stuff. I have been going hard on clearance. I'm exhausted, but someone's got to do it, right? It's going to be me. It's gonna, 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 it's gonna be. Grab some popcorn soda, wine, whatever you're drinking, and let's jump into it. Okay, so let's start with Amazon. We're gonna talk about some things between Amazon and Walmart that I'm definitely following. We have a lot happening here today. I have crap everywhere. I'm gonna try to say, I can't find my, my stand. This is better. Okay, so Amazon announced that September and October, they will be processing shipments that are coming into the warehouse. And then November and December, they're focusing on uh, fulfilling orders like through the holiday season and not focusing on processing our FBA shipments. This is really interesting. So I was selling pre-COVID. So I did go through the Amazon seller time when they did this before, when they were like, we're only going to be processing, what do they call it? essential items so if you were selling pencils and back to school stuff and clothes and socks that just sat in a container or in a box for a while because they were focusing on essential items like clorox wipes uh cleaning stuff and that is the, the last time i remember them actually verbalizing we're not going to be looking at the crap you're sending in we're focusing on processing orders is this because there's a shortage of help? I know working at an Amazon warehouse is the worst. I've like never seen a good article about it. <laughs> I've never seen any good uh, content surrounding Amazon employees. So I'm sure it's a lot of things, but this is interesting. Okay, so this Q4, I, this is the first Q4. I was like, I don't want a merchant to fulfill everything. Now my history is I started Pre, right before COVID. So I had to merchant fulfill everything because they weren't processing my shipments. So I was heavy in the merchant fulfillment world and then that just carried on. I've always liked merchant fulfillment anyways because to me it's lower risk. It, 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 there's a lot of pros and cons, but for me, I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna sell. I didn't know exactly sure what was gonna sell. So merchant fulfillment was a way I could test products out, have control over my inventory low inventory numbers, um, that sort of thing. So I've always enjoyed merchant fulfillment. And my first big Q4 on Amazon, I shipped out $100,000 in sales merchant fulfilled. That was a 30 day period. When I tell you I was depleted, mind, body, soul. <laughs> After that, I was like, I never wanna do this again. It was fun. I enjoy that hustle. I enjoy the fast flips. I enjoy processing orders, but that was insane. And the last couple of years have been just as insane. But this year I was like, girl, don't do it. <laughs> like send all your inventory in. Let's focus on something else this Q4. I mean, I would still always be merchant fulfilling, but just trying to scale FBA as much as possible. So I wasn't having to fulfill 10,000 orders or whatever it was in 30 days. Okay. Then Amazon released this announcement and I'm like, wow, okay, this is going to be a heavy merchant year because you think if they're not going to process my shipment, if it doesn't get in before November, then that means everything for the holiday season needs to get out at the beginning of October to give it like four-ish weeks to get fully checked in. Well, there are, thankfully Christmas comes out earlier and earlier, but will everything I wanna sell during Christmas be on the shelf in the beginning of October, end of September? Probably not. And I also wonder how many people will have an issue with just getting their stuff checked in on time. What if there's delays? There will be delays. <laughs> like some of this stuff is like in God's hands. You, you have very little control. Like once your container leaves, once your shipment leaves, it's out of your control when it happens sometimes. And I just see this being a heavy merchant year. So what does that mean for you and me? It means 
Okay, let's buy the labels. Every year, I never buy enough labels. It's hard to imagine that you, I still merchant, I merchant fulfill six days a week. So it's, it's just not as crazy right now as it will be. It's hard to imagine getting enough labels to fulfill 300 orders a day. And it, the burden of like you think, okay, that's cool, a lot of money. But then you take a step back and you're like, well, that's a lot of inventory for me to process and ship out. Then you take another step back and you're like, holy crap, have I ever fulfilled that much and got it delivered on time to the post office? Take one more step back. What product do I need here in my office for that to be done successfully? Because I guarantee if you're not prepped on the front end with shipping supplies, you will fail on the back end. And if you don't get your orders out on time, they're not checked in and delivered on time, uh, Amazon will deactivate you. It's one thing if you're doing 10 orders in like one, or you're doing 30 orders a month and you have one here or there. But if you're in the deep end of getting orders, like the three and 400, 200, 100 orders a day, and half of those don't get delivered on time, that's gonna be hard. Hard to come back from so i want you to think okay i'm gonna merchant fulfill this year what are the products i need the poly clear poly bags the uh bubble mailers the like plastic mailers boxes okay the thermal labels i always run out of thermal label labels we have a lot right now tape tape is another big one and i feel like we're always second in finding this crappy tape laying around um, here's one product I got. $3. Not bad, right? So, okay, that's big news. I feel like that's really big news in this space. Just, and FC transfers and getting your inventory checked in at a warehouse always takes a long time during the holiday season anyways. But now I feel like they're giving themselves a pass. I wanted to find this news article from Amazon. It came out on July 25th. The title is new updates to our on-time delivery policy and shipping settings because I was reading through the fine print of this and there were some things that were interesting. I feel like when Amazon rolls out automated updates, 50-50 they're great <laughs> or terrible. As somebody who ships a lot of merchant, I pay attention to when these automations are affecting me on the merchant side, and this one does. So if you look at the article, they have, it's basically on transit and handling time. So here's the handling time settings update. On September 25th of this year, the year of our Lord, to help improve the accuracy of handling time, will enable automated handling times for sellers that have manually configured handling time that is two or more days slower then their actual handling times. So if you click on automated handling times, let's see what that means. If your account has automated handling time enabled, which mine does, your handling time and order handling capacity is set automatically based on your historic performance, like how fast you're getting it out the door, then it updates and it's basically giving the buyer a really good view at when their product is gonna be delivered. But here's the thing that I found interesting couple of paragraphs down on this it says for order handling capacity automated handling time uses your historic data based on the maximum number of orders that you fulfilled in the last 90 days to calculate the number of orders that you can handle in a day so hang up if you go into your shipping settings and you click general settings you will see this automation and you can turn it on or off. Basically, Amazon is saying, how many merchant orders have you fulfilled in the last 90 days? And then it forecasts that this seller can only fulfill 10 orders a day successfully and they will set those limits for you. You can set those limits for yourself. You can say at 200 orders in a day, it needs to stop and it will throttle those and stop, basically stop you from selling anything else it's whatever you have it set up as this is automated though and you need to go into your general shipping settings 
and turn it off. I don't feel like it's going to be helpful because in the next couple months, we're going to be fulfilling a lot more orders than we are right now. And you don't want to be throttled by Amazon unknowingly because you are pushed into this program. So you basically need to turn off the order handling capacity. Otherwise, it's going to look at your past 90 days and forecast which you can handle as a seller. I don't like that. I have other videos here about merchant fulfilling orders. It's a good time to um, look at your shipping templates. If you are new to Amazon and this is gonna be your first Q4, your shipping template is like maybe fundamentally where you will lose the most money the fastest. <laughs> Crazy enough. If you have expedited shipping options on, which I suggest you do, having expedited services on will help you be more competitive at the buy box. So it's in your best interest, but if your prices aren't right, what the buyers are paying will not actually cover the shipping template shipping label i mean and you'll end up paying a lot of money i talk about this in freaking detail in my community i feel like every week i'm harping on certain things i see sellers do that are going to get them shut down uh tendencies uh, prices helping them stay up to date so they're not losing money on shipping and they're operating within Amazon's terms of service. So merchant fulfilling orders is something I'm passionate about, about. I love this option for sellers and especially new sellers. It gives you a way to jump into the deep end of Amazon. Why is my dog barking? I love it. I love that it's an option for you. You basically have access to Amazon's buyers, all of the traffic that they have available to them as a new seller, which is crazy crazy. You got to be ready though. You got to be ready for that deep end because um, you don't want to get in. So many people get in and make little mistakes that start their journey off on the really the wrong step. So that's why I have the crazy flip and mom community to help you um, get the right footing, start scale. But listen, it's not going to be, you're not going to be an overnight success. Let me just say that right now. I want to be your bestie and I want to be your encourager and I believe me, I will be, but also it's not going to be an overnight success. I would imagine most sellers see profit after six months. So you need to get started and understanding what is expected of you. Yeah. We are, this is a side note. We are closing the crazy flip and mom community to new members in Q4. So if you are interested in getting into leads, I teach three times a week over there. Uh, you can DM me questions. You can share the class. I post pictures of hauls like every day. Uh, you need to jump in now. I'll see you there, but I'm not done. It sounded like I'm gonna finish this call. I'm getting distracted by these ding dong stickers. Let's switch it up and talk Walmart. Walmart, Walmart, Walmart. What do we say? Okay, also I'm gonna be in San Francisco next week for the Walmart seller event. If you'll be there, say hi. I'm excited. There's so much to be said about Walmart and 95% of it is not good. <laughs> I've been buying Walmart clearance and then selling it on the Walmart platform. And when I tell you I'm, oh, I love the money, but to get my product live up, it is a full 24 hour process and my mentally I've been, I've been doing this a lot for the last uh, couple days and mentally I'm worn out dealing with the Walmart process of listing, listing creation, getting your inventory up and out the door. Whoever's saying that it's easy is lying to you. <laughs> Wait, is that me? Am I the problem? Okay, also I'm seeing more and more people talking about Walmart and here's my thought. I, I'm seriously like, I don't think they're selling on Walmart <laughs> because the information that they are saying, side eye, bombastic side eye. So let's talk about shipping on Walmart in Q4. It's very straightforward on the merchant side because I do not have expedited shipping settings at all. No one, no two day, anything. Here's why. Walmart does not, their return policy, as you know, is they're gonna take anything. There is a store on every corner. They make it very easy for people to return products, your products into a store and Amazon or Walmart sends it back to you on your dime. 
so returns are excessive over on Walmart. I'm just going to say they're excessive. And if you're going to pay expedited shipping for stuff that has a higher likelihood of being returned, you don't want to also lose money on expedited shipping. So it's something I just do not do at all. Also, Walmart is continually rolling out updates to their shipping policy that's related to the pro seller badge that is made is very unrealistic very unrealistic and i can't say strong enough words here that i hate it um here's also what i think i know this is just a rambling session i haven't done a, a video in like two weeks so we're just pushing it all here you're getting it all you just ramble the whole time like why are you here what what did you think you were getting from me we're working we're chatting cheers we don't need the negative energy i think whoever's rolling out policy at walmart has never sold anything on the platform or any platform and it also feels like they're just tweaking their in-store policy for their third-party sellers it's really set third parties up third-party sellers up for heartache and i think if you know that going in you can kind of like hedge yourself like don't turn on expedited shipping don't um sell things that are high priced over there because scams returns out of control because there's not a lot of policy they say they have a policy they don't that you can return freaking anything into the store there's a lot of this item says it's delivered and it's not and on amazon you have policies that you can pull on if a buyer says that and Amazon can step in and help you and refund you and the buyer if the package is actually lost. Walmart, if a buyer reaches out and they're like, hey, this is lost in transit or it says delivered and I never got it, what do you do? There's no policy, you have to refund them. That's what you do. So you can see how like that sets third party sellers up for failure and why there are not more sellers over there because of these issues that end up just affecting your bottom line, ruining the vibe, <laughs> you stop. But if you can hang on over there and you find the right products to sell with low returns, you can really dominate. Um, here are some of the things that I see that are just from people who've never sold on the platform, misinformation that I just think it has muddied the water. And so I, I wanna clear it up real quick. Walmart and Amazon are not the same as we know. And you can't even approach Walmart like Amazon. Here's why. Amazon, and I say this a lot, Amazon happens all online. There's no storefronts. Walmart primarily first was a store in every corner. Then they switched to e-commerce. So it is fundamentally built different Another thing is Walmart is based on zip codes. Like when you get on to shop, you can see your zip codes, what's in stock. Amazon is not like that. So this also feeds into who's winning the buy box. Because if you get on and look at a product like this, and this product is in store in your area, Walmart is in the buy box. But me in Iowa, I bought them all. So it's not in stock in store. Who would come up in the buy box? Say it with me, third party seller. So the buy box is not similar to Amazon because Amazon's inventory all is in one place, all online, where on Walmart, it's zip code. This is another good um, way I can explain it. So in Florida, when you go to the Walmarts, there's tons of uh, Disney products, Mickey Mouse. Iowa, that's not the case. So if I was in Florida looking for Mickey Mouse, I would see Walmart in the buy box because in every store in that zip code, they're in stock. But if I was getting on in Iowa to look for the same product, Disney product, I would only see third party sellers because that product is not in the stores in my zip code. Did it click? Do we click? So on Amazon, you can say who's winning the buy box for how long do they share the buy box? That is not the same conversation that we have on Walmart, okay? Because you don't know what stores across the country have sold out. Did they get the inventory? Then there are certain products that are only made for certain parts of the country. So it's not the same conversation at all. Completely different. 
Another thing, there's no ranking system right now on Walmart. They sent out this cute email, was it last week? And we're like, huzzah, ranking system. That link didn't work, guys. Are we surprised? I need you to tell me down below if you were surprised about that. <laughs> like, of course. Okay, here's the problem with the ranking system. Here's what I foresee. <sighs> I'm trying to formulate my words <laughs> really clear. How do you know what people are only buying in store and what people are buying online? So that's a huge difference from Amazon. It's all coming from Amazon one place. Um, so the ranking system is going to be muddied. If you, I imagine a lot of people are going in store to buy say soda, for instance. That's not a product people buy online unless it's limited edition, but I would imagine that would rank really well because that's a big seller for them. So as a third party seller, unless they can differentiate sales that are happening in store and sales that are happening online, even that would be hard because that's also maybe dependent on where in the country you live and what's in store and what's sold out and what didn't even make it to your part of the country. So people are just having to buy third party there. Do you see the problem? So I would love a ranking system to give us a direction but it's not going to be as clear cut as what we have on Walmart. And I think this also goes into, there are a lot of um, Walmart tools popping up a lot, like a couple. And I think they all have a problem interacting with Walmart because you just, at the end of the day, I, I think Walmart doesn't is not playing nice with the softwares and tools that are coming out. So they can't like pin down the numbers that are happening on Walmart. So you kind of have to give them a little bit of grace as well because uh yeah i think this is a walmart problem i'm struggling with it lately i'm struggling and i i'm confused how other platforms macari poshmark ebay amazon you can list a product and have it live in two minutes and on walmart it takes like 24 freaking hours like that is mind-boggling what is happening on the back end that there's so much hold up then it's there, then it's not. Last night I spent like four hours listing products. I would refresh the page and then I would have products that are not even mine in my catalog. So this is like, I've been working hard. So I think this is also a collection of me just complaining. <laughs> and I don't want it to be that. I'm still selling actively really well on Walmart, but I just wish they would get it together. Stop. <laughs> when I started on Walmart, I was really focused on merchant fulfilling orders. Since then, I have switched most of, like I have one merchant listing now there. Everything else is WFS because their new policies really hurt their merchant sellers and it's hard to keep up on. They are deactivating sellers who are canceling sales, not getting products out on time, not getting products delivered on time. There's very little room for grace. Even if you're doing everything you usually do on Amazon, you can make one misstep, have something wrong in your shipping template, and it puts your account at risk of deactivation. So there's other reasons why too. I have switched like the last probably six months completely over to WFS. I do enjoy it. Like once I get the product into my catalog, the last part of the process happens really quickly and it's cheap to get products in. You don't have to label all your products. Like a shipment, I usually am about 35 pounds a box. It's seven, $8. So in general, it's cheap to get it in there and then they have to deal with customer service and shipping and all that. So I really do like it. You also can price up as a WFS seller over other merchant sellers. So there's a lot of reasons why it's been a good fit for me, but Man, I'm, I'm kind of just here to complain, but also tell you, be careful out there on Walmart. If you cancel sales, if like, if I went to my shipping template and I changed it from five days to seven days, cause my good friend Morgan was like, put out your handling and transit time. And that will help your performance ratings. Cause it's always showing like a little bit behind, even though I ship most of my products same day. So I'm telling you, be really careful over there and mindful when you have products selling, you need to get it out really same day if you can. Um, otherwise you're gonna get your account 
into issues. Thank you for watching this video. I'm happy to be back and hopefully I'll, I'll be doing this more. I say that like right before the busy time. <laughs> like, I don't know about that, but um, I'll be here when I can be here. <laughs> I am in the crazy flippin' mom community three times a week. We meet Mondays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Central, Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central. And our Tuesday prep calls go on for freaking hours. I love them. <laughs> so I'm always, always talking if you have questions. I would direct you there. It's $50 a month. And listen, a lot of people are like, oh my God, $50 a month. If you can't afford that Amazon, it's not the right time to start Amazon because Amazon is expensive. I always push people who feel like they're not financially ready for Amazon to eBay, Facebook Marketplace. You're going to move your money a lot quicker over there. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for liking this video. If you want to see more content of me rambling and complaining, go ahead and like it. <laughs> I'll definitely be ready for more. Bye.